Hey, this is John from Alloy211. Uh, today's video is on the Chiapa 1873-22. But before I get into that, I want to kind of talk about, I guess, the state of YouTube and gun videos. I mean, I'm a very small channel. I've not heard anything. You know, I only have, like, less than 10,000 views right now. So, pretty small channel. I haven't heard anything from YouTube officially about it. I don't know if bigger channels have or not. From what I've seen in other people's postings, they haven't. But as of right now, I don't know if I have any videos that would be in violation of their new policies or not. I don't think I do, but I guess I'll find out. So, you know, hopefully I'm good and everything's fine, but I won't really know until they come into effect. So, if you watch my videos and like them, I just want to say, hey, thanks. Just in case, maybe in a month, my channel might be gone. So, anyway. Back to the Chiapa 1873-22, or as I like to say, Chiapa 1873-22. I don't know why, but I really like saying it that way, so I've been saying it over and over again to myself like that for some reason. I guess because I find it funny. And I kind of want to talk about this gun in regards to its quality and its value and just a couple different things about it. So, it's imported or made by Army Sport for Chiapa. Uh, they introduced them in 2008. It's available in 22, 22 Magnum, 17 HMR, and in a six shot and a 10 shot cylinder. This is a six shot 22 long rifle and I do not have the 22 Magnum cylinder with it. It only came with the 22 long rifle. And from what I read in a review or two about that, I don't know if I'm really that upset about it because they didn't really have a lot of good to say about the 22 Magnum cylinder in this. And overall, I'm not uh, I'm not thrilled with this gun. I I'm not really upset about it either. I paid eighty dollars for it because I had a Gander Mountain gift card and it was $130 and I couldn't bring myself to spend the $50 gift card on anything else there because their prices were so bad. Probably one of the reasons why they went out of business, but not yet I digress. Um, anyway, so it only cost me 80 bucks, and that's why I bought it. And for 80 bucks, I don't regret having bought this gun at all. It's a cool little 22, and I'd wanted a 22 revolver for a while, be it single action or double action. And at 80 bucks, there you go. But if I paid more than 80 dollars for it, I think I think I would be disappointed with it. And in preparing for this video, I kind of thought about it more about, you know, how would I feel about it if I paid $100 for it, or 150 or something like that, or the MSRP, which is 199 which, if I paid that much, I would, I would not be happy with myself. Anyway, it's a single action 22 revolver, patterned after the Colt 1873 single action revolver, and it does mimic its weight, uh, kind of, I mean, not exactly, it's a little bit lighter. And actually, its balance is weird because the frame is made out of an oh, what is it? Zinc, aluminum, magnesium, copper alloy. I believe it's called Zamac. So it's basically like a pop metal frame. It's got a steel barrel insert, and it's got steel line cylinders. And I'm not totally sure if the cylinder itself is made out of steel or not. It feels a lot heftier than the frame, so it may be. But regardless of that, with this light alloy frame, all your weight tends to be centered up here, and it's just not really that well balanced. It feels, I don't know, back light, I guess. Front heavy, back light. I mean, front heavy is kind of subjective because it does feel a little bit heavy in the muzzle, but it's more that it feels light back here. It just feels out of balance, which is a shame because... Uh, you know, I, 1873, it really is a generally well-balanced feeling gun, especially with this barrel length. Some other things are disappointing that maybe you can kind of see there. Uh, there's casting mark here and there. I mean, at least they took most of the casting marks out of the barrel. Just not way back here at the back or at the front of that. Um... And, like on the trigger, when I first bought it, and I don't know if you'll be able to see, there's a little line there that you can kind of see. Um, yeah. Let's see if I bring the light over. 
Well, you can't really see it, but when I purchased it, there was a casting, a big casting hump in the trigger. Um, I actually also filed the back of the front sight a little bit, just to make it more visible, because these sights are not very good in black. Black on black in these sights is just, you know, it's just not great. Um, and actually, when I was getting ready to do this video, and I started really to scrutinize this a little more, even these screws that they use to hold it together are cheap. Because I took the whole thing apart, <clears throat> went through it, and these, these screws are good quality screws. But the portion that holds the handle to the frame, these are just cheap screws. Um, inside the lock, lock work and everything seems to be reasonably good. Um, I did do some cleaning up on things, kind of like, you know, just the front side as such. You know, and internally I wasn't that disappointed with it, but just the overall quality of it is kind of disappointing. This thing is plastic, so... Um, let's see what else. They, they have a range of barrel lengths and just kind of designs and as I said calibers and six shot or ten shot cylinders. This particular one has a four and three quarter inch barrel. Um, it's 2.2 pounds overall. So I mean it's, it's not bad in those regards I guess. Uh, the, oh, the 38 regulator model, the one that's in 38 special, uh, MSRP is 359. But I'm going to go ahead and pop the cylinder out of this, which if you've watched my other video comparing a Colt single action to a Ruger single action in their design, then you've seen this firearm before because this is based off of the 1873. And the way it works is the same. You know, you have half cock to spin the cylinder freely like on an 1873. I'm going to go ahead and pull the access pin out. Something you want to be careful of with this cylinder, if you do buy one with the 22 Magnum, uh, cylinder is that it's got this sleeve right here that goes inside there and you don't want to lose this this is very important this is what it accesses on so and it could fall out and it, you might not notice it so make sure you don't lose that piece um, anyway this is another problem I have with this which is this little tiny thin ejector rod I mean it is tiny and if you were to say try to action this quickly, I could definitely see how you could bend or break this. And so, you know, it does mean you have to be slow and more methodical with your reloading. But like as, as an example, on my Ruger, this is my Ruger single action. You know, this ejector rod, I can work it fast. And with this gun with such a short barrel, you kind of have to in order to get the casings to come out. Because the ejector rod is actually shorter than to get the whole casing out of the cylinder. But, and I'll show you what this ejector rod looks like, just as a comparison. That, that's the, the ejector rod, that's the cylinder access. But that's the ejector rod on the Ruger. Try to get that in the light there. And that's the ejector rod on the 22, on the Chippewa, or Chiapa, uh, 1873-22. And there's no reason that it needs to be that thin. I mean, if you look back here, it gets bigger in diameter. They could have made it that whole diameter all the way down. But no, you get this little tiny thing here. And it works, but like I said, with the Ruger single action... I can, you know, stroke the ejector rod, well, right, like right there, I just bash it right into the front of the cylinder, but I'm not worried about hurting this too much. I mean, yes, you want to be careful with it. No, you don't want to bash it against the cylinder face, but in the same stroke, if you do, it's probably not going to, you know, break the ejector rod, you know, if you do it once or twice or, you know, a couple times, it's probably not going to break the ejector rod. But with this, in such a thin, and there you go, I'll show you dropping the cylinder back in, making sure you have the bushing, or the yeah, bushing in there. And this pin just goes in the front. Just goes in the front. Try to do it so you can see it. I've been complaining about this gun so much, I'm not really showing it that well. Anyway, there you go. It's all back in. 
again on half cock, cylinder will spin freely, and that's how you load it. Um, this doesn't have a transfer bar safety or anything, so I mean this is not, this is a gun if you were going to carry it with rounds in it, you'd want to carry it on an empty cylinder, especially being a 22. Um, and, and overall, do I think that this is a gun that someone who, say, wants to get into a single action but they don't want to spend money for something like this, should they buy this to just see if they like it, to test the water? And I'll say if you can get this, find it for something like 80 bucks or 50 bucks, I would say it's fine to buy. But any price over that, I there are way better options, especially on the used market. You know, on the used market, you can find better options than a single action, be it a 22 or even a center fire, than buying this. Like I said, do I regret it? No. But if I'd spend any more money on it, I probably would. And does it function? Yeah, it functions. And is it accurate? I don't know. I've never really shot it for accuracy, but, you know, having shot it and hit things with it, I'd say practical accuracy. It's as accurate as my Beretta 21A, which if you've watched that video is a small 22 Beretta that fits into your hand right there. It's got like a one inch barrel. So I mean to say, oh it has comparative accuracy to a small semi-automatic firearm with a one inch barrel. That's not really favorable to this to this gun. So all in all, if it were a really good deal, I'd say yeah, go ahead. If it weren't a really good deal, then I would say find something better. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked the video or found it informative, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you watch some of my other videos and you enjoy that stuff too, subscribe. Hopefully I'll still be around for you to watch more videos. As long as I get to post, I will keep posting videos. So thanks. Have a good day.